Welcome. Today I'm going to look at Lemonade, which is listed on the New York Stock Exchange, and this is because of a very request. So thank you for the request. Stay tuned at the end of this video. I will share with you the action that I'm taking with regards to Lemonade and my stock market portfolio. Before then, just if you're new, key things to look at on this channel, my journey to a £1 million investment portfolio, my long-term challenge, also look at some personal finance, how-tos and stock reviews such as this one. So let's start off with an introduction to Lemonade. So what do they do? So it's a relatively new company. So they look at insurance provided in US and a handful of European countries. And we look at things like renters and pest insurance. Now Lemonade is considered a disruptive insurance company. And it's one of the, the, the largest markets of world insurance. It's probably one of the, the key constants in life a very large total addressable market size, but it's suffered minimal disruption. So I think one of the key points of Lemonade is it's aiming to be a disruptive company. And it's very much kind of app-based with very quick decisions in a lot of cases, both on claims and quotes, with um, AI underpinning this, this process. Now, there is a change, they claim, to the standard insurance model. And one of the key selling points is this kind of the money left over in one of the various pots, subject to board approval uh, and the company being financially solvent, they will give it to kind of good causes. So we've got some stats here, very strong reviews from members, 30% of claims, which presumably would be the smaller ones, handled instantly. Our insurance can be quite complex. I think part of the selling point here again is to make this very simple, much more kind of friendly process. The apps here, you've got the website, Okay, so that's, that's a brief introduction to who they are and what they do. I'm thinking here, long-term investor, a couple of things. Like, first of all, it's a relatively new company and the market cap is low, which we'll see in a minute. So potentially there's quite a lot of upside in multiples if this company does very well. However, in the very long term, the company share price in the long term follow the trajectory of the company earnings. And if we've got a company here that's giving away a lot of money as part of its underlying principle on one of its USPs, the actual owner's earnings of money attributable to the owners of the company is therefore by definition going to be lower. So will that hamper long-term share price growth? I see there's been quite a few funding rounds and they've raised half a billion dollars to become a public company. So there's been plenty of rounds, plenty of interest from some big banks and corporations, including SoftBank Group. So there are certainly some big players that believe in this company. So we have a look at the stats here. The market cap is 4 billion and that price to sales is 43 so that for me is quite an eye-watering amount particularly for an insurance company and it's going to be quite tricky actually with an insurance company and um, i'm expecting when we look at the moment some some losses and the reason for that is insurance companies are more effective in general when they have larger portfolios so they can spread the risk over more policy holders and lemonade being a, a new company in this market is very much likely to have a much smaller base of customers there can be a bit more volatility in the profitability potentially and so they can get to that critical mass price sales of 43 very large number it is a very large number so they need to be absolutely churning out some massive growth to, to justify this in my view and the forward price to earnings ratio is minus 16 so that is suggesting looking forward that they are not expected to make a profit they do have a billion pounds of cash on the balance sheet with uh, negligible debt. So therefore, you could argue, as you can see, the enterprise value is, is 2.8 billion instead of the market cap of 3.9. So you are getting a billion when you're buying the 4 billion company, so a quarter of its cash, roughly speaking. So simply Wall Street for the, the top level view, a good platform. Revenue, 90 million. This is a really, really small company. Earnings, minus 170. You know, there is a view that says it's a disruptor, you're going to get negative earnings for some of the reasons we touched on. Do you buy an early, yes, a low valuation, then you get a higher multiple return? I think you know, that is an argument. For me personally, that isn't my investing style. If we have a look at what's projected to happen going forward. You've know, got a view here that says the company's unprofitable and not forecast to become profitable over the next three years. So it's quite a risky time to buy into the company. And in fact, the losses are expected to widen. 2023 losing quarter of a billion on revenues of 205 million and i'm not saying you couldn't make money with this company because it, it certainly is possible but this feels like it's so early stage and the losses are getting bigger it doesn't feel like from a risk management perspective the right time to go into this company and own part of them 
we look at the history as well, the losses have got bigger and bigger each year. It's not all negative. As we saw, the debt to equity position is good. There is no debt. It's a very strong balance sheet. So I think what we can say, we've got this analysis here, there's probably a lower chance of failure in the next three years due to the lack of debt and the cash on the balance sheet. However, the company will need to show very strong growth, particularly to not profitable in order to get a lot of share price appreciation. Now, the other thing here is if you look at the leadership team, Sweden, they've got some good amounts of ownership. There has been a lot of shares sold in terms of insider trading volume. Some big numbers here for individuals, 2 million, 1.8 million, $8 million, as well as looks like one of the investors as well. So there's no shares being bought, it's only shares being sold. However, insiders still do own 7% and venture capital firms own 20%. They'll of course be looking to make a profit on that. SoftBank owns around about a fifth of the company. We saw earlier they, they've made some rounds of investment. So we have a look at, at the chart about what's been going on, let's say, in the last two years. They went public not too far after the virus situation came in. And the last year, we got a run up to around about 150. And it's been dropping down since. So we're now at $63 per share. So there has been quite a significant drop off. So from what I've seen so far, there's nothing here that's making me think I need to buy this company now. There are alternative options, which are growth companies that are profitable of a similar market cap. And you can look at Boohoo as an example of that in the UK, for instance, or maybe even Corsair Gaming in the US. But there is an article here by Motley Fool that's been published quite recently. And this actually suggests that Lemonade's high valuation is cheap. So let's, so let's look at the alternative point of view here. So premium per customer is going up quite significantly. Higher price policy is being sold and they move away from entry level policies, which they've obviously tried to win customers with. 70% of customers are 35 or under. So this kind of higher tech AI approach is probably more natural and more comfortable for them on average. Tension rates are improving. But as we saw, they're not profitable and there isn't free cash flow. They are going to launch car insurance. And that is the vast majority of the value in the insurance market in America. So this car insurance thing coming in has the potential to multiply significantly the revenue of Lemonade. Really good cross-selling opportunity here. So the companies analyze their existing customers that are with them that don't have car insurance. And there's a billion of revenue there. And we've seen the company's revenue is probably about 200 billion or so. So if only a proportion of those happy customers who gave them the 4.9 out of 5 ratings swap over, that's a good revenue boost. And we're talking potentially hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue boost. So I think there's, there's possibly a short term, perhaps in the next year, significant boost to that revenue. And that could cause a surge in the share price. But to me, that's relatively speculative. Um, it may or may not happen. We don't know. But the, the key thing is here, in the long term, is the company going to be profitable? And grow the share price and i think it's so early in its journey that i am hesitant to invest and that doesn't mean it's not a good investment and i could be wrong i'll just be more conservative in my portfolio i've got better alternatives we have a look at some of the yahoo analysis as well so there's relatively low analyst coverage on the revenue you see 124 million estimate this year 200 million next year they are big gross numbers but the earnings estimates are pretty bad and the next five years you're looking at minus 10 percent. and i do like insurance companies you know, i've got berkshire Hathaway, i've got viva i've got legal in general I've got direct line the reason i like to buy insurance companies in general is their their dividend is very strong and this company's not going to be paying a dividend for five plus years because it's a growth company and they have other priorities for their their money which of course goes to the good causes i think one of the interesting things could be how they select those good causes as well because you could select causes that may polarize some of customer base as well so they need to be careful about that as they grow because that could become quite tricky selecting those causes so i believe this is a bit of a mixed bag you've got potential strong revenue growth uh, particularly from the car insurance area it doesn't look like a profit anywhere on the horizon but the risk of failure is low so if you want a perhaps more speculative view long-term investment but this could be one for you do your own research i'm not an investment advisor it's not one for me I suppose one of the other things is if this model looks like it's successful, they could get bought out, which could be um, technology could go to one of the large insurance companies, and then that, that could be an exit plan. So I'm struggling a bit with um, finding this a compelling valuation. Do comment below if you've got some additional information or you have a different view. I want to see how my portfolio is doing on its journey to the £1 billion long-term challenge. 
click the video link on the screen now.